Here is a review and a teardown of the Northridge Fix Ring LED light. It's used together with the camera microscope. I bought it from the Northridge Fix webshop together with a lot of other items. The price was 89 US dollars. You can also find it from a company called Lapson and they are present on AliExpress and they sell it for around 52 US dollars. So we have three parts, the ring LED light, a control box and the mains power cable. The ring light is made of an aluminium body and inside we see a PCB with 96 white LEDs. The PCBs and the LEDs are slightly angled so that the light will be centered in the middle of the camera view. The ring LED light is attached to the camera lens with these three screws. I personally don't like it. The microscope lens is made of aluminium where the ring light is attached. So here we have metal to metal. I would prefer some plastic or rubber around the three screws. The total length of the cable is 1 meter and 50 centimeters. Note, it's very important that you don't connect this ring light to another DC source, since there is no current limiting resistors inside the ring LED light. More about this later. The mains power cable is just a regular type, so no news here. Here we have the control box. The input voltage is 90 to 240 volts AC. The output voltage is between 10 and 12 volt DC with a maximum load of 1 amp. Here's the input power connector. And here is the connector for the ring LED light. Just a regular DC connector. On the front we have a mains on-off switch and a dial to adjust the intensity of the light. The weight of the box is very low, only 200 grams. We will have a look on the electronics and quality inside later. Let me mount the ring light on the microscope and let us see how the ring LED light performs. So here we have a Raspberry Pi Pico board under the microscope. I'll do a number of different tests so you can see the performance of the microscope and the LED ring light. I also have an anti-glare light that I can turn on and off. First we'll do some tests where we have the automatic exposure on in the camera. So you see now it's off and now the automatic exposure is on. And we can adjust saturation down here to get some more color this color and we can change the contrast and we can change the sharpness here so the picture quality looks quite nice when we have this uh, zoom level so let's uh, see what happens when we turn on the ring light So what you see here is the camera is trying to adjust according to the light and it doesn't really make any sense to have the ring light on here in this mode. Now it's minimum and now it's maximum again. Let's try and turn on the anti clear light. And then now we have the ring light at minimum. And now we turn it up. And here the ring light is at maximum. So you can see next to the to the right side of the Raspberry Pi chip there is a it's like a shadow. 
and it disappears when we turn off the ring light. And we can try to change the contrast here. See what happens. And the sharpness. Turn down the situation a bit. And now we will turn on or turn off the ring light. And here we only see the anti glare light. And if we turn off the anti glare light, we have this. And if we turn on the anti glare light again, we have this. And now the ring light is minimum. And when we turn it up, you can see the text on the crystal disappears. Now you can see the text on the crystal. And if we just put a little a small amount of power into the ring light, it disappears. So you can see you can get different details in the picture according to the light level. I think that the microscope is very good at the automatic adjusting the light for the external light sources when we are at this zoom level. Let's turn off the automatic exposure and see what happens. We do that on this button and then there's cannot really see anything. But then we can turn up the exposure a bit to level nine, like that. And now we have the anti light on and turn that off. And uh, now the ring light is off. And now we increase the power level on the ring light and it doesn't really help anything. You can see what happens if we increase the exposure a bit. Now we get too much, it's too much. So we have to have it here at level nine. And we can turn off the ring light. And then we turn on the anti glare light and then we get a bit more details. And if we increase the level of the ring light, we get this. So I think that the picture looks better when we have the auto exposure on. See what happens here. The saturation goes to zero. Then all colors disappear. All right. Let's have a look on what happens if we get uh, further into the board and uh, zooms into some more details. So now we have zoomed into some more details. And we have the same settings as last time. Uh, and you can see that um, there's a bit less light here. So what happens if we turn off the automatic exposure? And now we turn it on again. So let's see what happens when we turn up the level for the ring light. And now it's at minimum. Now it's at 50% and 100%. And now it's on the minimum level again. Let's turn on the anti glare light. And then we increase the level on the ring light. And now it's at maximum. And now it's on 50% and now it's on minimum again.
and we can try to change the saturation a bit. Go down. Contrast. Sharpness. And now the ring light is at minimum, and we turn it up. And now it's on maximum. And now I turn off the ring light completely. And now we turn it on again. And now we adjust it up. And turn it off. And now it's only the ring light. Oh, sorry, the anti glare light. And if you turn off the anti glare light, we have this. And if we only have the ring light again, and the ring light is at minimum, we turn it up 100%, and 0%, and totally off. We can try and see what happens if we turn off the automatic exposure and let's set the exposure to a higher level here. Okay, maybe 15, 17. And then we turn on the ring light. Didn't give much. Then we increase it to 50%. And now 100, not so much happening from 50 to 100% here. And if we turn on the anti glare light, and then we decrease the ring light to zero, and now 50% and 100%. All right, I hope that gave you some insights in how this works and what the benefits are of the anti glare light and the ring light. Let's have a look on the electronics inside the control box. So I just took apart the power supply. That was quite simple, just four screws here in the bottom. And what do we have here? Um, just some, a few little parts and uh, wires going up to the on-off switch on the top side and a, a couple of wires up to the dial up here. The input power socket and the DC output power socket. And here on the back side, you can see we have the mains power coming in here to the rectifier through a small filter, then we have the AC to DC converter here. We have quite nice uh, isolation distance here. That's uh, up to copper for the feedback. And then there's this uh, Y capacitor here. And over here, we have the secondary side. We have the DC power being regulated here. And then it's fit to the output here. I can just show you um, the schematic for the device that I drew. Then I can explain a bit more on how this is done. But the quality looks okay, but it's very cheap to produce this. One problem we see here is that there's actually room for a fusible resistor or a fuse that was just replaced with this on off switch. I would have preferred that they had both things in here. Uh, 
Lad os have lukket den skematik. So I drew this schematic in KiCad, and you can also find that on the, in the in the comments down below. So you see here uh, we have the mains coming in through the on-off switch to a bridge rectifier, and through a small filter here to electrolytic capacitors and a inductor. And then we have the AC to DC switcher here. That's uh, the brand uh, DK106, so the type number. And here we have a snubber network and the transformer, the mains transformer. And uh, the Y capacitor here and the optocoupler with the feedback. And over here we have the 10 to 12 volts coming out on the DC connector. And uh, here we have the potentiometer that regulates the power from 10 to 12 volts. And um, that gives a feedback to the optocoupler and into the AC to DC switcher about to regulate the power between 10 to 12 volts. You can see the calculations down here in the bottom, how that was done. And the circuit you see here, that will actually make sure that you don't fry your LEDs in the ring light because this will kick in when the current gets too big then this transistor will turn on and then it will regulate down the power uh, to the AC to, DC switch, AC to DC switcher. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider to subscribe to the channel and or leave a comment. Bye!